Okay, in this video, we give one proof of Jensen's inequality. And Jensen's inequality is about a convex function. So let's say f is a convex function on some interval. Then for any choice of any number of points, let's say n points in the interval, we have the following inequality. So the average value, so this pi I will explain later, of the functional value values at these points is greater than or equal to the functional value of the average point. Here this pi, so p1, p2, and so on, they are kind of probability measure. So they are positive or zero and they add up to 1. So the sum of pi's is 1. So pi's are weights. Okay? So weighted average of the functional values at these points is always greater than or equal to the functional value of the average value of the points. OK, now what does it mean for a function to be convex? OK, here's what it means uh, intuitively. So suppose we have a function uh, defined on an interval oops, uh, between here and here, uh, x1 and x2. Okay, and then the fun if the function looks like this, then it's convex. So what it really means is that if we connect these two points, this point and this point, by a line, then any point between x1 and x2, let's say this is x, uh, the value of the function here, that is this one, is always less than or equal to the value of the corresponding uh, point on the connecting line. Okay, so this value, y value is, all this value is greater than this value. So that's what a convex function means. So now let's translate this intuition into an equation. So first of all, uh, what's the equation of this line? So this uh, y value of here is f of x1, and the y value of this is f of x2. So if we connect these two points, this and this, the equation of the line should be y is equal to, uh, first, the gradient x2 f of x1 over x2 minus x1 and x minus x1 plus f of x1. And we want to show that this is always greater. Uh, we want to say that uh, a convex function is a function such that this value is greater than or equal to f of x at any x between x1 and x2. And by the way, any x in between uh, between x1 and x2 can be expressed as a linear combination of x1 and x2. So p x1 plus 1 minus p x2, where p is between 0 and 1. So any uh, value of x between uh, these two is can be expressed as this. So let's substitute this into here. Okay. So let's do it. x2, uh, f of x1, x2 minus x1. So p, x1, 1 minus p, x2 minus x1 plus f of x1. So we have uh, x1 here, x1 here. So that will be negative 1 minus p, x1 here. So we have 1 minus p in as a common factor, and we can factorize it. So if we do that, we have x2, x1, and uh, 1 minus p, x2 minus x1 plus f of x1. Now, we have this factor and this factor to be cancelled. So now we have f of x2 f of x1 times 1 minus p, p, 
plus f of x1. Now, if we uh, expand this, uh, we have x f of x1 here and f of x1 here, and so a negative sign is here. So this one part will be cancelled, and in the end, we have p times f of x1 plus 1 minus p times f of x2. So the definition of a convex function means that this is greater than or equal to f of p x1 plus 1 minus p x2. So this is the definition of a convex function. If you look at this definition, and let's say if we write p1 is equal to p and p2 is equal to 1 minus p, then of course p1 plus p2 is 1. And of course, uh, p1 and p2 are both uh, non-negative. So this is a special case of Jensen's inequality, right? So instead of n points, we have just two points. Okay. So Jensen's inequality is this one. So just p1, so if n stops at 2, then that is exactly Jensen's inequality. So you can think of using mathematical induction to prove a general case. So let's prove by mathematical induction. First, when n is equal to 2, uh, Jensen's inequality is true by definition. By definition of convexity. And two, suppose uh, we have Jensen's inequality for n uh, points. Okay, suppose we have uh, this uh, pi f of xi greater than or equal to uh, f of the average of the points. Then we want to add one more point. So we already have x1, x2, and so on, up to xn. Then we add one more point, xn plus 1. And here we have p1, uh, p2, up to pn. And let's add one more number, pn plus 1, where pn plus 1 is between 0 and 1. Okay, And of course, by... Uh, assumption, these pi's from 1 to n, okay, Th this summation is 1. So if we add up to n plus 1, it's greater than 1 in general. So if we add from i equal to 1 to n plus 1, this is in general greater than or equal to 1. So it's not exactly 1. So what shall we do? So we define a new set of uh, constants, let's say qi, by pi divided by uh, 1 plus pn plus 1. So that means this thing. So you know, this is 1 plus pn plus 1. So that's we d if we divide by this, then the sum of q's from uh, i from 1 to n plus 1, this is normalized. Okay? So what we, wa we, tr we should try to show is that uh, this thing uh, is uh, sum of i from 1 to n plus 1, and q weighted by q, xi greater than or equal to, so f of uh, sum of q's, a q i, x i, i from 1 to n plus 1. So we show this holds. And to do that, of course, we use this assumption. Okay? So let's make uh, good use of it. So, you know, this is a point in the interval. So let's 
write this as x, uh, let's say x0 prime, uh, uh, i from 1 to n pi px, which is in the interval. Okay. Now, start from here. Okay, so the left hand side is equal to, so we can split the summation into two parts i from 1 to n and n plus 1. Okay, now these qi's is this uh, i from 1 to n and pi and 1 plus pn plus 1 and f of x i. So the second term doesn't change. So, you know, this is a constant. There is no i in the denominator. So we can take this out. And then we have a sum of these terms. So sum of these terms, according to the assumption, is greater than or equal to this thing. Okay. So let's replace that. So greater than or equal to 1 over uh, 1 plus n pn plus 1 and f of since we uh, defined uh, where is it and this one x prime xo prime xo prime and uh, wait a minute oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay is it okay? Oh yeah, it's okay. And qn plus 1, f of xn plus 1. Okay, and now, by definition, okay, uh, by the way we define qi's, you know, we call that 1 plus uh, pn plus 1 plus qn plus 1, this is equal to 1, right? Uh, if you want to see that, uh, how this is so, qn plus 1 is actually pn plus 1 over 1 plus pn plus 1, right? So if we add this, this is equal to 1. So this weight plus this weight is equal to 1, and we have two points in the interval. Therefore, this is reduced to the case of n equal to 2. So again, by using Jensen's, uh, the definition of uh, convex function, this should be, this thing should be greater than or equal to f of uh, 1 over 1 plus pn plus 1 x 0 prime and qn plus 1 xn plus 1. Now, if we revert the definition of this x, x o prime, then this is sum of uh, i from 1 to n and pi x i. And pi divided by this thing is qi, right? So after all, we have uh, i from 1 to n plus 1 and everything qi here and xi. And we are done. Okay, that's it for this video. See you later.